So you're having some symptoms and you think you might have a UTI. Well, you've come to the right place because that's what we're going to talk about this week on DXTX. Hi everyone, welcome back to another week of DXTX. I'm your host, Sahan and Safi. Glad you could join us this week. We're gonna be talking about UTIs. Specifically in this week's episode, I'm gonna be chatting about some of the more straightforward symptoms of a UTI, which is also known as a urinary tract infection. So I hope uh, this video will be valuable to you. As always, please remember to like, subscribe, and comment below. Just uh, if you have any concerns, I do keep my eye out and I'll try to address them uh, as they come. When we talk about UTIs, we really are talking about lower urinary tract infections. And clinicians specifically uh, really think about this uh, in terms of uh, differentiating between whether or not patients have lower urinary tract symptoms or upper urinary tract symptoms. This week, we're gonna really be focusing on lower urinary tract symptoms. And when we talk about the lower urinary tract, we're talking about an infection classically from the bladder down. Anything higher than that tends to be a little bit more complicated. So that's what we're gonna be focusing on this week. We are gonna do some future episodes where I'm gonna talk to you guys about some of those more complicated cases and things to look out for and we'll chat about that at the end of the video. Specifically when we talk about UTIs, uh, you really uh, have to understand that normally urine in the bladder is sterile but an infection can really occur at any point within your urinary tract when that bacteria has time to settle and reproduce that's when you get those symptoms of a UTI or urinary tract infection. Specifically those infections can occur at any part of your urinary tract which means if it occurs in your urethra uh, as clinicians will call that urethritis if it occurs in your bladder it's called cystitis if it occurs in the male prostate it's called prostatitis so really anywhere within along uh, that urinary tract uh, you can get an infectious process which can then lead to uh, inflammation and produce some uh, uncomfortable symptoms for the patients. Now when we talk about lower urinary tract infections the classic symptoms that patients often complain about are frequency meaning that you're often going to be feeling like you need to go to the bathroom more frequently. Uh, patients also complain about dysuria. Uh, and when we say dysuria, we're really referring to that painful uh, sensation when you're urinating. Oftentimes, patients uh, describe that as a uh, burning when they pee, or uh, they might get a little bit of uh, pain or discomfort at the tip of the urethra, just where that opening is uh, at, at the tip. Uh, patients will describe some discomfort there. Other times, patients oftentimes will uh, con complain about uh, some discomfort in the lower abdomen so uh, oftentimes they'll feel like oh, my bladder feels irritated I feel like I I'm, I'm full or I, I feel like uh, there's just kind of a burning discomfort lower down within that pelvic region and sometimes more rarely especially in women uh, because of that inflammation and irritation along that urinary tract people may often get some bleeding as well that occurs with their UTI the last symptom that uh, people people often describe with UTI as well is referred to as urgency and I think of urgency as that feeling where you feel like you you keep needing to go to the bathroom all of a sudden you get that urge to urinate and you feel like uh oh I need to go and you have to run to the bathroom you feel like even if I've peed you know five minutes ten minutes before I feel like oh, I gotta go again and you might find yourself sitting on the toilet and nothing's really happening but that urgency is also another symptom that you commonly will see with UTI the other thing I should mention is we talked about that lower abdominal discomfort uh, really though uh, lower urinary tract symptoms should not be presenting with substantial abdominal pain. We do question whether or not there's something else going on as clinicians when abdominal pain seems to be the predominant symptom that the patient's complaining about. So if you have those symptoms that we've just gone through, the, or a combination of those symptoms, like the frequency, the urgency, that pain or dysuria when you're uh, peeing, some people may also have that blood, as we mentioned as well, or that lower abdominal discomfort. Uh, if you are a healthy, non-pregnant woman with no history of a urologic abnormality or some sort of structural problem or recent instrumentation like a Foley catheter, then it's quite possible that you're suffering from a simple, straightforward, lower urinary tract infection. And this can be assessed and very adequately managed by your uh, family doctor, walking clinic, or your primary care provider, meaning uh, outside of that hospital setting. This is their bread and butter, and they're more than capable uh, of handling these kinds of symptoms. 
these symptoms oftentimes do end up coming to the emergency department when patients can't get access to a primary care provider, but in reality, this can be adequately managed outside of an emergency department. But let's dive into this a little bit more uh, and talk about why this is the most straightforward scenario. So when we talk about UTIs, we often talk about UTIs when uh, we're talking about female patients, and this is because they're much more common in women. Specifically, they're actually 50-fold more common uh, in women between the ages of 20 to 50 as compared to men. Why is that? Why is it that women are more likely to get UTIs. And really, when we talk about UTIs, that comes down to the anatomy and how we're created. Uh, specifically for men, our urethra uh, can be up to 20 centimeters in length, and uh, that therefore allows ample amounts of time for us to flush out bacteria before it can make its way up to our bladder and cause an infection. The other thing that you have to remember is that female urethra, apart from being about only five centimeters before it gets to the bladder, is also quite close in proximity to the anal canal. So because of the proximity to the anus, uh, it's more likely that bacteria can make its way in, into that urethral kind of area and work its way up into the bladder and lead to symptoms of a urinary tract infection. As a result of what I've just mentioned, whenever we see uh, as clinicians urinary tract symptoms or UTI symptoms in our male patients, uh, we always ask a few more questions because that's really not a very straightforward scenario. As men, it's extremely uncommon to get UTIs. It doesn't mean that it doesn't happen, but especially in young men who have no urologic abnormalities, it's unusual. So really we go down the path of making making sure that there's no signs of a structural abnormality that's causing them to get a UTI. So if you're a man and you feel like, oh, why is my provider giving me such a hard time with all of these symptoms? It sounds like I got a UTI. Uh, you know, I looked it up online and it sounds straightforward. It's really not because as men, we should not be getting UTIs. In older men, especially as our prostates enlarge over time, uh, you might not be emptying your bladder completely. And so it is more, more likely to seek straightforward UTIs in older men, but we're always, even in older men, asking some more questions and making sure that we're not uh, missing anything more ominous. Okay, so that wraps it up for this week. Uh, really, we kind of just went over the very straightforward cases when it comes to UTI symptoms and presentations. Now, in the coming weeks, I'm going to be releasing some videos about the less straightforward cases, the things that we think of as clinicians uh, that kind of, you know, ring some alarm bells in our in our minds when we hear those kinds of symptoms. We're going to be talking about those upper urinary tract symptoms and when to get more concerned, when to get more urgent assessments. Until then, I hope uh, this was valuable to you uh, and I hope you learned some more facts about UTIs that hopefully you didn't know before. Thanks again everyone for joining me on another week of DXTX. As always, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe below. I also wanted to remind you that this channel should only be used for informational purposes. It should not be used as a substitute for medical advice. If you are experiencing any of those symptoms that we dis discussed or you're concerned about any symptoms in particular that you're having, I always recommend that you get a formal assessment by a qualified medical provider. I'm your host, Sahan and Safi, and I look forward to seeing you again next week on DXTX.